Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the Google Chromebook Pixel, which is probably the best Chromebook that money can buy, and it costs quite a bit of money with a starting price of $12.99, um, which a lot of people have commented is a lot of money to pay for a laptop that basically runs a operating system based on a web browser. But the Chromebook Pixel is not limited to just running uh, Chrome OS. So let's take a quick look here. On the side, you can see that I've got a USB flash drive plugged in, and on that flash drive is Google Android. So right now I've got this booting from the flash drive. We're running Android from that flash drive. Um, the touchscreen isn't supported. The touchpad isn't supported, but I've also got a mouse plugged in, and so I can navigate using the mouse. So we can take a look here and show you that it's running Android 4.2.2 Jelly Bean. Runs a number of different apps. Now, not every app is going to run properly here. So if you go to the Google Play Store, first of all, you'll notice that on this huge high-resolution display, well, it's not huge, it's 12.85 inches, uh, but 2560 by 1700 pixels, um, there's a lot of sort of empty space here. And also, when you look at various applications, um, a lot of apps a lot of these apps are showing an install button, but when you get to a lot of apps, you'll see this. Your device isn't compatible. And that's because we're running a version of Android for x86 processors, and a lot of these apps are not optimized for that. Uh, that said, certain apps do work, so you can get a web browser up and running. And it looks great. Um, you can see that we can do tap to zoom. Um, if you did have a device with multi-touch support, for this particular build of Android, you could also use the touch screen for pinch to zoom, but it's not working on the on the Chromebook right now. Now you'll notice though at the top that some of the system items, so things like the notifications, the uh, tab bar, look really tiny, but since Android apps are generally resolution independent, the apps themselves actually look just fine here. Uh, the reason I'm actually running a live wallpaper in the background is because if you use the, uh, one of the default wallpapers, they're just not big enough, so they don't take up the whole space. Uh, what else is working here? Google Play Movies works. It takes a while to get a movie to start running, so I'm not going to show you that, but I have tested it, and it does play movies. Same for Play Magazines. So your basic Google services are going to be working, uh, and Google applications, but some other third-party apps might not work. So that's, uh, that's showing what it looks like when it's running Google Android. Uh, theoretically, you could install Ubuntu or another Linux-based operating system and boot it the same way. And in order to do that, all you really have to do is get the Chromebook into developer mode and um, boot from a USB drive. You can find instructions for doing that at lilliputing.com. Now, let's go ahead and uh, shut this down. And I'm going to reboot into Chrome OS and show you another neat trick which is how to run Ubuntu alongside Chrome using the same kernel. And what that lets you do is actually switch back and forth between the two operating systems on the fly. So if you're disappointed that a Chromebook does not support running third-party apps and is basically just designed to run web apps, then you can always use an application called Crouton, which lets you get... Uh, log in here. Uh, you can install an app called Crouton, which lets you run Ubuntu applications. And in order to uh, start it, I'm just going to go ahead and... It took a while to install, so this is sort of the short version, but in order to start it, we're going to open up a terminal by hitting Control alt t type shell, and then sudo start xfce4. And now we've got Ubuntu Linux with the XFCE uh, desktop environment. Now, out of the box, there was a similar problem to what we saw in Chrome here, which is that all of the menu items and icons and everything were just incredibly tiny. Uh, I went ahead and made some adjustments so that they're uh, easier to read, but it's, uh, it's sort of a mixed bag. So let's take a look, for instance, at the Chromium web browser. You can see that... You know, it looks pretty good at a small screen here, but if you if you maximize it, you wind up with all the space on the side. Now, Chrome, the web browser, lets you adjust the font sizes, and everything really looks just fine, and you can get more screen real estate if you want it, and you can get less if you want it, and so forth. So, it's, uh, it's really not a big problem here. Oops. But the bigger problem is, see that tab bar? 
that is incredibly tiny and difficult to uh, to work with. And that's something that I've noticed in a lot of applications here. So while you can change individual system fonts, and font sizes and settings and so forth, it's difficult to, uh, to change the overall uh, items. So these icons, for instance, down here at the bottom are pretty tiny. We can pull up a terminal window. The text in the terminal actually doesn't look bad at all. But if we, um, if we wanted to just sort of change everything at one fell swoop the way you can on a MacBook with Retina display, there's no simple way to do that. Um, so, you know, it's not a perfect experience. I suspect that, you know, future uh, uh, tweaks will be made so that you can run Ubuntu a little bit better on uh, devices with high resolution displays like this, but right now it's not quite perfect. That said, if you are uh, disappointed in the limitations that come with Chrome OS, like I said, you can run full desktop style applications here. So now I've got, um, for instance, the GIMP image editor. We can go ahead and crop photos and resize, draw, do all sorts of different things. Uh, it would probably help if I picked the right command. So we can edit images using something like GIMP. And if we wanted to, we could also even we can even edit videos using the OpenShot video editing application. So uh, it's pretty powerful. Uh, I mean, the device has a Core i5 processor, 64 gigabytes of built-in storage. You can add a SD card slot if you, or add an SD card if you wanted more storage space. And so the ability to run those sorts of apps is actually pretty cool. Um, And you can also install the Synaptic Package Manager. So I used apt-get to install a couple of things, but you can actually go through here and treat it sort of like an app store uh, where you can download all sorts of different items from repositories. You can install Firefox on your Chromebook if you really wanted to. Um, as I mentioned, this is running alongside Chrome OS, so it's actually using the exact same kernel and in the same hardware interface. There is support for touch screen, but you can see that the, uh, the cursor is really pretty small, so I find that touch isn't the most effective way to interact with this. Um, but the touchpad does work just fine, and you can always switch right back to Chrome just by hitting Control-Alt-Back, or switch back to Ubuntu by hitting... Well, Control-Alt-Refresh is supposed to do it, but sometimes you need to do a couple of little tweaks there. So we've got the two app, uh, two operating systems running side by side at the same time. Um, as I mentioned, you could just go ahead and install Ubuntu or uh, run it off of your USB flash drive or install it to the solid state disk if you wanted to. But if you uh, feel that you can spend most of your time using Chrome OS and just occasionally want to be able to install and run desktop applications, this is a way that you can do that. You can find more instructions for doing this as, as well at lilliputing.com or for um, uh, running something off of a USB flash drive like Android uh, at lilliputing.com. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing and a look at alternate operating systems running on the Google Chromebook Pixel, which is a aluminum unibody device with a Core i5 processor, Intel HD 4000 graphics, a 2560 by 1700 pixel uh, IPS display, and uh, an excellent touchpad, among other things. And you can see the backlit keyboard here. So um, there you go.